I think everybody needs some nice armor to make them feel strong and powerful and possibly pretty. So I'm deciding to make my own. Today we're starting with the pauldrons. Hello lovely people, it's Icy. Yes, I am here with the first of a massive project to sew my own armor. Uh, I haven't really seen anybody else make like costume armor by sewing it yet. Mostly armor stuff, sensibly, I guess, uh, for cosplayers seems to be made out of foam or warbler, um, but that's not my skills. My skills is with the trusty sewing machine. Um, so, in my timeline popped up this particular piece. I saw these shoulder pieces, these sewn fabric shoulder pieces, and I was like, oh, I must make some. And then I went shortly after that, oh, I need to make a whole thing around that as well. So I've been inspired by this particular pattern. Now I will link to the pattern in the description below in case this is your jam also. I'm not buying the pattern though because the budget for this entire project is like 20 bucks uh, and patterns in Australia cost $25 at least. So I'm not going to purchase this pattern. I'm not going to copy the pattern. Uh, I'm just going to sort of use the images as inspiration for my own design. But I do want to give you the link in case this is something that you want to make for yourself. So a few things. Uh, the style of the pattern, uh, it's really just a side piece and a top piece um, is, is pretty much all it is. Uh, so I think I should be able to design something that works. Now, if you've watched the previous video, link in the corner, um, you'll have seen I purchased with my 20 bucks <laughs> a plastic table mat. Uh, so this table mat, the plan for this is actually to be a neck, sort of like a, like a chest piece. Um, but as I was mucking around with it, uh, what I noticed as well is if I just pinch off the top, there we go. If I pinch off the top and then do this and then just tuck up sort of the inside, I actually get something that looks quite good. Uh, I get something that has like serious kind of armor vibes. I like this kind of scooped edge very much. It's got the turn up at the neck. I mean, the point obviously is not, would need to be get, like, making it out of material, it's easy to get rid of the sharp corners. So I would do that, but I like sort of this particular design. So I'm gonna use this as a bit of an inspiration for the final design. Now, materials. So, uh, I have this, nice um really nice actually sort of it's not it's not paisley as such but it's kind of like really pretty kind of swooped uh sort of gray on black design it's a piece of quilting material quilting uh, cotton that i bought originally about two years ago <laughs> to make some masks and then have not it's okay i've made masks out of other fabric it's all right um so that will be the top of it. Underneath that, actually fused to it, will be this really heavy duty uh, interfacing. So this is iron-on interfacing. So basically it's a little shiny on that side. It's actually glue and you just iron them together uh, and that will actually glue the other material to this. And that should give it, I mean, you can see how much structure this thing just has on its own. This is like a millimeter thick, it's, it's chunky. Uh, this particular piece of fabric is about, I'm not sure, 15 to 20 years old because I know the project I bought this for uh, and I made that somewhere in the range back then. 
That project might even get recycled into this one. Possibly, but I will leave that for the moment. So underneath, rather than using two layers of this, because the pretty stuff, you won't see it, uh, I just need some black fabric for underneath. And for that, I have an old tote bag um, made out of uh, just black broadcloth. So it's, it's, fair, it's relatively stiff. I think it's okay. Um, so I'm going to use this for, it's not particularly like dark, but it will, it'll do. Plus it'll be sandwiched together. So it'll, it'll be fine basically. Um, and this is a, yeah, a tote bag. Mr. Icy gave me, that's well, actually hundred percent cotton. Oh, nice. Anyway, that Mr. Icy gave me that he was given. It's a, well, it's actually a red rum bag, but I've got this set up myriad. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it does actually say murder uh, so it's a Stephen King bag I don't know where he got this I don't know why he had it uh, I think he must have just bought a Stephen King book at some point and it was given to him anyway he's given it to me and I will use it for this project a uh, twill a twill of some kind would be better because it would be heavier duty and thicker but I don't have any and as mentioned I don't plan to buy any material uh, the only the only stuff I'm going to buy for this project is literally the plasticky bits that I need for like the extras. So all the material I either will already own, have bought previously for a different project, or I'm going to recycle an older project into into this. So it's a bit of a challenge, but I'm really looking forward to it. So it's I mean I am cheap. It's true, but this particular project is not about that. It's about the challenge of reusing things and combining them back into different projects. I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, I've assembled a whole bunch of drafting type tools. I have paper uh, for drawing up patterns because this is pretty much like it's a very straightforward pattern just a front piece a top piece and a side piece i think i should be able to do quite a lot of design work just by cutting patterns out of paper and sticking them together and sticking them on my shoulder i think that should be pretty much doable so i think i should be able to do most of the iterations of patterns just in paper and then the next plan is i will make a muslin so a draft out of fabric uh, if the paper patterns are going really well, the draft actually will be out of the lining. I think I probably will just do that. I'll just make the lining just with really big seam allowances. Draw, make that up, make the adjustments on the lining, transfer it back to the paper, and then cut out the final. I think I think it'll be fine because it is it's a fairly simple pattern. So it's just like front piece, back piece, top piece, cut multiple. So that should be okay. Uh, I have an assortment of tools. I have some. French seams for doing neat curvy lines. I've got some big protractors. I've got my lethal cutting wheel for actually cutting out the pieces. Normally I use scissors, but for this kind of thing where everything's got to be really precise and exact, I think we might go with the cutting wheel. Uh, and I think it's time to do some design work. Okay, so let's do some design work, shall we? Uh, so the pattern that you can see usually is... So something like this is the pattern. Uh, so rounding off the curves. So pretty much it's a piece like that on the side and then a long strip that joins it together maybe with some trimming it in at the bottom at the top and then a second piece on the back. So that's the general look and feel of this pattern. So I think though what I want to do is go slightly more round um, just because I think there's going to be quite a lot of round shapes in this pattern, uh, in the, the whole outfit actually. So I think I want to go for something that's a little more curved. So top section, probably still a very similar design, but as you can see from that sort of test folding I did, I think what I want to do is actually have the pauldron shape be like this. 
Hmm. So when I when I draw well, to be honest, when I draw that up, it actually looks more like a cape top. I don't know. Maybe. I think it'll be fine as long as I stick to, stick with making it in um, two shapes. I think it should be okay. Now the other thing I want to do is rather than having a flat section across this join at the top. I think what I want is to do it more as a kind of a, a sloped section so where the tops and the bottoms come to a point or if nothing else maybe uh, definitely curve in the top sections um, yeah I mean maybe actually no I take it back I think around the neck I think maybe I do actually want it to be have a wider section because it should hug the neck better I think if I have like a, a slightly wider section here uh, in which case probably I do want a squarer section at the bottom as well so maybe maybe I will go this this section here might be fully parallel and not have any kind of curved section at all so, um, and as I'm drawing this up here, I'm not actually liking how it's looking. Ooh, that's a little better, isn't it? So if I make that and that, so that angle through there, parallel to here, and then this, this angle, and then this angle, uh, basically the same to sort of here and then there's another triangle that sticks off the top of the back yeah okay I think I think that might be the way to go actually and then just use the French curve to um, to pull out the sections that I want So that's a triangle like that, that, and that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah, that's, that's fine, actually. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, so we're not going with large, very large curves. Uh, I think we're going with more of a teardrop shaped. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty good. So those curves, uh, those angles match. Those angles match across the center. Those angles match here. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, I think that gives me an initial spot to actually start drawing up some patterns. Um, so then pretty much what I'll have is a piece um, that's this shape, roughly, who knows, uh, really, who knows, uh, and then I'll have a long piece that goes all the way down. So literally it's just going to be a, a giant rectangle and then multiples of these. This is quite good actually because I can cut this on the, on the diagonal pretty much, stack them together. I think that should work fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that should be just dandy. All right, let's do some. Uh, let's let's try and make some prototypes out of paper. I think. I think I made a mistake using the very curly, curly IKEA paper. Uh, it made the project more difficult than I thought. However, initial pattern, not bad, not bad. Much. Okay, so that's my curly, curly piece of paper. Uh, as you can see, with a strip on top. 
I haven't, I haven't worried about the back because I figured better just to get what it should look like first. No. I mean, am I wrong? That looks great. So the idea, is, so it should sit, uh, the idea is it should sit flat on the top of the shoulder and kick out at the arm. So you've got some level of lift. Now, um, if I go sideways, you can see that it's hitting the neck here. So I think what that means is that this top section needs to be a triangle, not a strip. Uh, and also I think looking at this, this needs to be a bit wider as well. So probably another two, two centimeters wider at the bottom, I think. Looking at the front here, I think maybe this curve here needs to be flattened a little bit. I think it's a little too prominent, which means also I can take off the matching section here as well, which is what I want to do because I think this is coming down a little, a little far. So uh, as, as an initial test, really happy actually. Um, I think that's pretty good. The other thing is obviously this will be all made out of fabric, not paper. So, so if it sits and needs to curve around, um, I think that's fine. That's fine. But even that, let's just, I mean, it's just fucking, it's all right. Even that, just like that, it's just sitting there. It's just sitting there, which is good. It's really good. So yeah, I'm just gonna flatten off this curve a little bit, flatten off the partner curve at the bottom. And I think this time, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna, I'll do a front and a back piece um, and then stick them together and then do another test. So, second prototype. Pretty good. I'm relatively happy with that. Uh, it does, it's, I mean, it sits. It is made out of paper after all, but rather, it, it's starting to look a little elven. Not that that's a problem. I think that could work, but yeah. So that's the um, second draft. So if you take a look, sits well, sits real good. Um, so looking from the side, so I think a couple of things. One is it obviously is it's not curling around the back of the neck further and I don't know if I need to do something about that or not. I would need to substantially make the pattern very different in order to get it to curve around here more. I could possibly do that. I could possibly just sort of on the back piece, uh, just sort of take this curve out a little more, which I might do actually, because that, that's pretty insignificant. Um, and it just means that I need to cut sort of two front pieces and two back pieces rather than four side pieces, for example. So not, not, not a huge issue, really. Uh, the other thing I will change is, I think here, I think what I'll do is I'll bring, rather than having a triangle that goes all the way to here, I think this section should be square, so parallel, and then from about the shoulder point, then it should taper in. And I think if I do that, I think it might sit a little better. Not 100% sure because it's honestly, it's growing on me. I gotta say it is actually growing on me. I think if I do that though, what will happen is this bottom section will actually sit out a little further because it's curling quite significantly here. 
a lot of that's because of the shape of the um, the triangle I think and the other thing I think I'll do is uh, I think I'll get rid of the point so what I'll do is is just take um, a curve a French curve again <laughs> love them um, and just round off the top so that ultimately the finish of the top here is actually a nice curve still relatively sharp not as gentle as the curves in the rest of it but I think I'll do that and the other thing I'll do is also on the bottom as well once once the whole thing is done uh, obviously this piece I had was not quite long enough so just um, finish the curve across the bottom as well so that's a, a nice neat curve across the whole piece uh, but prototype two pretty good so yeah I think what I'll do is I'll just um yeah I'm just gonna add an extra section for the back curve and just just to test I'm not even sure I'll cut out a whole new piece I think I might just stick stick a bit of something on here and go from that um, and then yet yeah, change um, take this width then continue it up to about there then bring it into a triangle so overall though I'm, I'm happy with the triangle shape I think that works but yeah I just think at the point of the shoulder I think I just need a little more a little more room I think that will that will sit a little better but in general I think it's good and also oddly the curvy paper <laughs> while an absolute pain to work with I think is actually working on my behalf because it's adding the extra curve that sh I should be able to replicate with fabric. So this this curve here, for example, where it's curving curving out past the shoulder, I can actually create that with the interfacing and the fabric by just sort of as I'm ironing the interfacing, actually ironing it around something that's curved. Uh, so that should um, basically laminate the two things together. In a curved shape which I think I, I think I will do because I think that will be an important part of the final look probably so let's try draft number three about hmm, three three prototypes roughly technically it was all on the same pattern this one uh, but it just required fairly small adjustments pretty much so uh, ultimately um, I've gone from having a straight top of the shoulder to a triangular shape instead um, actually it's not even triangular it's triangular to here and then straight at the bottom uh, the diamond shape has been narrowed a little bit uh, and the top has been shortened and rounded so I'm actually really really happy with the final pattern it sits really well uh, it's kind of amazingly I mean I know it's paper so it has no weight and it is rough paper so it is slightly grippy but the thing just sits there and I'm really really pleased uh, so the the back piece and the front piece are slightly different just so the back piece kind of curls around the neck a little more uh, but in general I'm really pleased with how that's turned out so the next step is to um, transfer these shapes onto uh, maybe cardboard or better paper at least, not this stuff because this stuff tears like you can breathe at it uh, and it will tear even though it's, it's fairly thick. Uh, then once I've got it transferred to um, better, to make a, like a, a final pattern, oh and I need to actually add seam allowances on the pattern pieces as well when I transfer them over so at least a one centimeter seam allowance um, around everything then once I've made the new pattern then I need to cut out all of the bits I need but the first thing I will cut out is the lining 
and then I'm going to sew the lining up and then just check that it looks okay. Uh, it's not actually going to have any structure, the lining on its own. So now that I think about it, that may not be the best test. We'll, we'll see. The definite next step is to actually make some more permanent pattern pieces that I can actually use for accurate cutting. So, uh, let's go do that. I'm back. After, admittedly, a considerable break, uh, I got distracted playing computer games. Horizon Forbidden West, very good, very much enjoyed it, but that has been taking up my evenings. And also, in the meantime, I've covered its share, which I've never done before, uh, but it's very exciting. By the time this video is done, there will be, I will have pictures on my Instagram of the chair, said chair, but it looks so good. I'm so pleased with how it turned out. Anyway, back to the Armour Pauldron project. Okay, so I've cut out the lining um, out of the tote bag and I've sewed it together and I am... wait, which way is the front? Very pleased. So I've um, ironed it as well. Uh, so this is just unlined, 100% cotton broadcloth. Uh, well, allegedly, feel it feels it does actually feel like cotton. And as you can see, I mean, fashion statement. Um, it looks great. It looks great. It's actually sitting in place with nothing other than friction, which is delightful. I mean, there's no weight to it. So once I do the rest of it. Um, it might, um, it might probably will need some sort of attachment device, but honestly, I am really super duper pleased with the shape, uh, and, and how it's sitting. It's successful, successful. All those paper, um, the, the paper prototypes have worked a treat. So the next stage is to cut out the <sighs> to cut out the linings. Uh, sorry, to cut out the decorative, the fashion fabric, as opposed to the lining. Uh, sew that up in the same way, and then to cut out the interfacing. So I think the plan is to actually will be to cut out the interfacing or the iron-on interfacing and the fashion fabric. Then I'm going to iron the interfacing on and I'm going to iron it in such a way that I will try and iron in the interfacing to do this swoop up at the top like of the center part and then I'll sew it together. I think that will be the best way because the interfacing will cut slightly less uh, than the seam allowance so it like more the seams won't be super big and thick and chunky basically so anyway 
That's the next step. I'm done and it worked so well. I'm just really, 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 really extremely pleased with how this project has turned out. It was relatively short. I just did multiple other things. So ultimately it probably only took a couple of hours. Um, most of it was in the um, prototyping in paper, but check this out. Can we? Oh yeah, there we go. You can actually see the material, which is, as you can see, really, really pretty. Originally purchased a couple, oh, I guess, when start of 2020, I guess. <laughs> uh, and how elegant! I'm really so very very happy with these uh, they are absolutely perfect size wise just fantastic they sit uh, so well uh, just here they just kind of sit at the right height of the neckline they pretty much are just sitting there via pure friction on my t-shirt which is actually great because I haven't really completely decided how I'm actually attaching them to anything yet. The plan is to actually make the next piece of the costume and then I'll work out how I'm actually going to have these attached. 
I can actually do a fair amount. Basically, if I lift my arm up front ways, they'll fall off the back. Uh, but apart from that, they actually stay on really, really well. The current plan is I have some like magnetic uh, tape, um, a bit like fridge magnets, actually. Uh, so I'm actually thinking that might be an option. Just have a little bit kind of hidden inside the top of the sleeve of the curious or whatever it is I make and then have a matching piece sewn on the inside here and then literally just it magnets on. I think that might work. Uh, if not, I can go for discrete press studs or hooks and eyes or even Velcro if necessary, uh, though I would ref prefer to go with something a little kind of uh, more subtle because if the attachment point on the top of whatever this is underneath that will be here is more uh, subtle, then I can be flexible with what layers I add. Did it work as a pattern? Yes, a hundred percent. Would I make it exactly the same way next time? You know what, It um, because I've made it the way where it's basically put the right sides together, sew around the outside, turn it inside out, um, that's worked fairly well. Uh, but because I didn't cut the two, like the lining and the outer material at the same time, there are differences, which has meant that, for example, on one of these, I couldn't then sew like a top stitch all the way along through here to attach the back permanently to the front because the sizes were slightly different and it was starting to pull weirdly. So a different option would be to do what's called flat lining, where you have the lining piece and the top piece together, and then you sew the seams. The disadvantage of that is you would see all the seams on the inside, and then I would need some way to trim nicely around the outside. Now that's a complete and absolute option. Uh, you would just see sort of like a liner, and that completely would work as well for different things. But ultimately, I'm really happy with how these turned out. The one thing I didn't take into account and should have been utterly and completely obvious before I even started was this was never gonna work with the previous Lady Jessica dune dress with the hood. Of course it was never gonna work because <laughs> the hood is like sits partly underneath these. It was it was impractical for me to think that was going to work at the start and I don't understand how my brain went, oh yeah, that'll be fine, that'll be great. It's like... <laughs> so... So anyway, um, so I need to work out what I'm actually doing is kind of like the foundational garment that's going underneath this whole outfit. Do I still want to dress with a train to be kind of the base of this? I mean, maybe? Um, do I cut the hood off the Lady Jessica dress so I can do that. I mean, possibly I could just make up a different dress to be the Lady Jessica one instead. Uh, or a different option is to just like find some other fabric and then just maybe make a skirt that has a train. <sighs> Which actually, as I say that, is actually probably more practical um, and I actually have like a costume style not stretch but like Elizabethan not Elizabethan, basically large sort of black material uh, broadcloth underskirt that was originally going to be designed with like the underskirt for a full-on fancy Elizabethan outfit which could work quite well. No train, but it is like floor length. Mm. Anyway, so delighted, fantastic. I think they're amazing. Um, if I was ever going to some sort of super duper fancy formal dinner, like the Oscars, I would make these again in like silk taffeta or something and then make a dress to go with them because I am just so pleased with how fabulous they look. They just look ridiculously good. So 
So in general, I'm absolutely delighted, uh, but it has changed, sorry, uh, it has changed what I plan or what I'll need to do for the rest of the actual kind of outfit. Uh, I'm even not sure right now what the next piece is that I'm making. Am I going to make like the neck piece that goes underneath? Do I even want to have like a collared piece? Because you can see like with a scoop neck shirt, these look so good right on their own. Um, I have tried it on like with a collared shirt, like a, you know, like a turtleneck style t-shirt just to see how it looks. It looks fine, but does it look as good is the real question. So that's an option. Um, I need to think about that. And then the other option uh, that I could do next would be sort of the curious, uh, but I'm having thoughts about that as well. So I want to make it more of a tunic style, like with a kind of built in kind of skirt part or what. And it's all very up in the air right now. I don't quite know where I'm going next, apart from the fact I love these. I love them so much. Uh, so, expect to see me wearing these from time to time <laughs> once I work out how to attach them to something. Uh, yeah. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, do subscribe to see what happens next on this sewing armor journey um yeah it's gonna be exciting uh all of the armor type and all hobby type projects are all within the same playlists so if you're not interested in the gaming content you can just sort of keep an eye on those playlists uh but do if you have not come follow me over on instagram and twitter where i am semi-frequently very frequently on twitter i'd love to catch you there Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.